Hey, David. Hello. Hi. Sorry about that. Amazing. No worries. How are you doing today? I'm doing terrific. Let me see. Uh, wow, here. it is the, the David Meltzer. <laughs> yes, it is, my friends. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. We know you're worth a million bucks, and we thank you for accepting to share your thoughts with us on leadership for free. Of course. Wonderful. So, Richard, you want to take it away with the introduction? Yes, of course. So, hi, everyone. We are completely excited and so happy for every single one of you that you're supporting this event. Thank you so much, Mr. David, to be with us. So you guys know that I'm, I don't do spoilers, but first of all, my name is Richard Ovalli. I'm co-founder and speaker of Evolutionist Leadership. And I'm so excited to introduce a really high level profile speaker that is a co-founder of Sports One Marketing. He's also a host of an entrepreneur po podcast. The name is The Playbook. He also has the uh, one of the top business, 100 top business coach, uh, you know, uh, earnings that he earned three times an international best-selling author. So I would like to have the pleasure to introduce David Meltzer. Thank you so much to be here today. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to answering some questions. Awesome, um, awesome. So Good. anyone from the audience have any questions they want to ask David before we get into it? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, sir. So hello, uh, David, my name is Angel Roman. I'm also one of the co-founders of Evolution of Leadership. So my question to you is, um, what is the toughest leadership challenge you've ever gone through? And um, what did that teach you? You know, for me, the toughest aspect of being a leader is to be an intelligent follower, uh, to understand what I need to learn from the others in order to inspire them to reach and pursue their potential. So dealing with the needs of the ego, especially as a leader, the need to be right, the need to be offended, the need to be resentful, angry, worried, anxious, frustrated, separate, inferior, and superior, all of those needs of the ego are the most difficult thing about being a leader, that we have to learn to elevate others, to elevate ourselves, to be an intelligent follower, to learn from those around us, to understand and connect to them the same way we connect to what inspires us. And if we can connect to what inspires us and allow it to come through us for others, we'll be great leaders and we'll inspire others to be great leaders as well. Nice. So for me, I do have um, a question of my own. I would like to ask you, David, how do you exponentially increase the value you provide to other people? You know, for me, it's a matter of daily practices. So I need to, one, take inventory of my own values every single day, not being afraid of being a hypocrite, not being afraid to tell people, hey, I really didn't know what I was talking about yesterday, but I've learned a lot and now I know more. And one of the things I always know more about is there's more to know. So I'm continuing to learn and to grow and accelerate and change my mind according to what I've learned from the previous day. But if I don't take inventory of my values, my personal values, what's important to me, my experiential values of what I want to do today, you know, ask anybody what they want to do today. 99% of the people don't have a clue what they want to do. They'll say, I don't know. Ask them where to go eat. They don't know. Ask them what they want to eat. They don't know. You got to take inventory of your experiential values. Most importantly, you're giving and receiving values, taking inventory of what you want to give to others, what you want to produce, what value you want to provide, and then also take inventory of what you want to receive. One of the biggest shifts in paradigm in my life is to know that I can't give what I don't have. So I primarily focus not on being a victim of living in a world of not enough where things happen to me as a victim, definitely not in a world of just for me, you know, buying things I don't need to impress people I don't even like. But more importantly, I live in a world of more than enough, more than enough of everything for everyone that comes through me. I receive through me to others. I receive to give, not give to receive. That's wonderful. Thank you for your answer, David. Thank you. I have one. I have a question. Thank you, David. My name is William Korea, founder of Pro World Life and HNDP. Um, quick question. 
Um, during this climate, how has leadership played a role in your life? And how, who do you seek? Like, how do you, like you being at your stature, who do you seek for guidance? What do you do on a daily practice like that's, that helps you stay focused? Sure. So number one, I always have three mentors in my life. I always found uh, through my experience of making millions and millions of dollars, losing it and making it back, I found the easiest way to get what I want in life is to find someone that's already there and ask them for directions. So what I'm doing by taking inventory of my values is then I go ahead and ask for help from the people that sit in the situation that I want to be in. And so I'm looking at all times to have at least three mentors, a minimum of three mentors, three people who are where I want to be and that are willing to give me the directions on how to get there. And so, you know, number one, always have those three mentors minimum in your life. Two, it's about control. Uh, you know, in times of uncertainty, which is always, because if anybody here can tell me what's going to happen tomorrow, give me a call. We can make billions of dollars together. But in times of accelerated growth and change, what you want to focus in on is your own capabilities, what you have control of. Now, your capabilities are your skills that you have, the knowledge of what you have and the knowledge of who you have. And of course, increasing that desire that you must be what you can be to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential to be your best. And if you can take those capabilities and see how they're synergistic or supplementary to what's doing well today, what's stable today, or maybe what you think will do well in the future. But if you can find the synergies, how your capabilities are supplementary to those, you'll make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Just remember what you do have control of are those capabilities and the mindset that's surrounding those capabilities, the heart set of how you feel about everything and your perception. And then of course, the law of Goya, get off your ass is what you think, say, do, believe, and the unconscious competencies of your personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions, all of those things aggregated. Remember, the mathematical equation to luck, no matter what circumstances you're in, the more you pay attention to, and the more you give intention to, the coincidences you want in your life, that's the mathematical equation. Attention plus intention equals coincidence. So create those coincidences by utilizing the law of Goya and then allowing the law of attraction to take place. Thank you very much. That's amazing. Wow. That is really awesome. Um, so the next question here is, um, so how do you successfully pitch an idea to an audience? So, you know, I have a new pitch show that I want all of you to apply to. It's going to be on Bloomberg TV, $50,000 worth of cash and prizes. Every episode will get great advice to all the pitch uh, competitors that want to come on, but there's five things that I'm looking for in a pitch. Number one is the most neglected. It's literally um, credibility. Remember this rule. If you are 100% credible, everybody will do what you say. So if I was 100% credible, I could tell all of you, hey, wire me a million dollars Friday. I'll wire you back 2 million on Saturday. All of you would have no other questions if I was 100% credible. People don't take the time to use a fine tooth comb of credibility to make sure people don't misconceive what they're talking about, that they're overselling, back end selling, manipulating, lying or cheating to people. Even if it's unintentional, the minute you get caught in one of those aspects, people are searching in skepticism for the holes, the vo voids, the shortages, the obstacles, the interference and corrosion between what you're telling them and the truth. The number two thing is emotional attachment. Write this down. People buy on emotion for logical reasons. People want to, you, you got to get to what they like and what they don't like about you, the product, the service, and solution. People buy on emotion for logical reasons. And then finally, the last three, you got to quantify the value. You got to quantify the reasons. Put some money next to it, some time, some resources. Don't be a purple dinosaur. Don't be like that purple dinosaur, Barney, right? Be quantitative in your analysis. Don't be subjective. Too many people in a pitch, you know, their pitch sounds like this to me. I love you. You love me. 
Nobody makes any money. No, talk about the money. Talk about the quantified value. Talk about these are the reasons we're going to make money. Number two, these are the impacts that we're going to have to make more money, save more time, create more resources. Or finally, here's the capabilities I have, those skills, the knowledge, and the desire in order to effectuate the plan that I've given you, the credible, emotional plan that I've given you to quantify the reasons, impacts, and capabilities. If you can do those five things in a pitch, you guys are set. Please join me. Go ahead. You'll have the link there. It's dmelzer.com forward slash pitch. Come join me uh, uh, this, you know, this uh, fall. We're going to be filming in December. The show will be airing on Bloomberg and Amazon uh, in January. So please apply. Get your family, friends, associates. Everybody is welcome to apply. We're going to win some big pri prizes for pitching on my show. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, David. And uh, I do have another question for you. I would like to, because you mentioned about businesses, so I would like to ask you, what are some signs that you feel a person should look at to know that a business is going to thrive? What are you looking for? What are the success factors? Number one, the entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. People, I invest in people. If I can find a person that has the desire to must be what they can be, the common denominator of all successful people, the people with the spirit of excellence. If I can find someone that must be what they can be, I know they're not gonna quit on me. I'm doing a training this Friday. I do free trainings every Friday for 20 years on not quitting, having the spirit of excellence, having that desire. So number one thing I look for is an entrepreneur that's not gonna quit on me. And then two, I'm looking at how statistically successful from the reasons, impacts, and capabilities that were articulated to me, will the person be in making money with my investment? You know, business is about making money. Uh, money is the heartbeat of a business, meaning you're going to stay alive till your heart stops. You know, I can take away your ears, your mouth, your arms, your legs. You're still going to be alive. I can even shut down your brain. You're going to be alive as long as your heart's beating. Same thing holds true with the business. As long as you got bank in the account, as long as you got cash in the account, you are alive. It's a heartbeat. So you got to make sure that you're guaranteeing that you're going to have cash in the account tomorrow, that you're going to stay in business. And the only way someone can guarantee to stay in business is number one, the right entrepreneur, and two, the right business model. Wonderful. And uh, any last minute thoughts, David, since it's almost 120? And I see that Viri has a question. Maybe yeah, let's take another. I'll question. take another question. I'll go a little bit over because we started late. I'll, I'll take another question. Thank you. So Viri asked, "What was the hardest decision in your journey that was super crucial for you to be here?" The hardest decision in my entire journey was to ask for help. Uh, I tried to do everything by myself. I grew up poor single mom, six kids, work two jobs, being a second grade teacher, filling up turnstiles at the 7-Eleven with greeting cards, packing my dinner in a paper bag, teaching us to be doctors, lawyers, or failures. Fetus wasn't fully developed till after graduate school. Tremendous amount of pressure to be educated. But more than anything else for me, it was the ability to be humble and to ask for help. I didn't learn that lesson until I was in my mid thirties and I ended up losing everything over a hundred million dollars. And I realized the easiest way to get to where I want to be is to find someone that's in the position that I want to be in or in the place I want to be in and ask them for help, ask them for directions. You want to write down one more thing while I'm here. Here's what you ask people, ask them every day in person, ask them every day via email, ask them every day by phone, text, Ask them every day, radio, print, TV, social media. Every day you need to ask this one question. Do you know anyone that can help me? There are no gatekeepers in your life. There's nobody trying to stop you. That one tree branch does not go to war against another branch. We are all one. We are here as sponsors and power sponsors. We create the illusions. We create the interference. We create the void shortages and obstacles. So let's look upon everybody as sponsors of ours or power sponsors of ours. If we do so, we'll be very comfortable asking for help. Do you know anyone that can help me with blank in order, in order to understand what we want? Most importantly, we're gonna to have to make sure we take inventory of those values to know what we want that we're asking for and to find the people that have it so we can ask directions to get it. And I think if everybody here lives with those two words, radical humility, and another two words that are really important just to finish up, thank you. 
you know, you want to change your life. All you got to do is say, thank you. Say thank you before you go to bed. When you wake up, if you can do that 30 straight days, I guarantee all of you will change your life. Uh, you know, I've been speaking for years and years and the amazing thing about thank you is I've never met one person that was able to say thank you for 30 straight days that didn't change their life. I guarantee it will. Here's the saddest thing by tomorrow morning, half of you won't say thank you. <laughs> and literally within three days, most of you won't say thank you. Now I have studied physics, quantum physics, and metaphysics. I sit on the Transformational Leadership Council with the world thought leaders like Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, uh, Mary Morrissey, and Bob Proctor, and Brian Tracy, the legend of sales. All of those people guarantee the one thing that makes us all whole and successful is gratitude, the ability to say thank you. But yet, like I said, by tonight, half of us won't say thank you. By tomorrow morning, another half. And of course, within three days, another about three of us will be left saying thank you. It took me nine months before I could say thank you every single day for 30 straight days, morning and night. So it's not an easy task to do things daily, but if you can have gratitude, forgiveness, accountability and inspiration in your life, if you utilize the daily practices of taking inventory and asking for help, practicing any fear, I promise all of you that you'll have everything you want in your life rapidly and accurately. So please reach out. My email is david at dmeltzer.com. You can reach out to me for help. I got some great private groups. I got free trainings on Friday. I'd be more than happy to send you my books, my guides, my exercises. Follow me at David Meltzer. It's all for free. Love to be of service. I appreciate all of you and all the time that you've spent with me. So thank you so much. Thank you, David. And as he mentioned, everything is in the chat. I'm Jake Flesh now put it in there. And you can check out his free Friday trainings. Thanks, David. You got it, my friends. Let's do this again. Thank you for your time. Yeah, Thank you. Again. Thank you so much, sir. Hope you have a great day. Take care, guys. Reach Take out. I'll help Thanks, you. David.